Here is what we're about to do here. We're about to spawn fireballs from the sky and they're going to fall everywhere within the scene. Right, so we're going to learn about collisions with um, objects that are from the real world and uh, spawning random objects at different time interval. So in Unity, we start a new project with an empty scene and uh, make sure you import the magic leap package. All right, if you don't remember, just go to assets, import package, custom package, or look for the uh, previous video lectures. All right, also have the Unity, um, the magic leap uh, remote simulator. And let's get started. So the first step is to um, create an object that we are going to spawn from the sky. So let's go ahead and create that object. I'm going to go and just right now, just create a regular ball. So I'm going to click on game object, 3D object and sphere. All right now, let's look at the sphere. It's just right there. I'm going to make it black and I'm going to create the material for that. Just right here on assets, right click. And uh, by the way, I'm going to be quick because this lecture is about magic clip. It's not really about unity. Um, I have plenty of other courses on Unity and you can learn way more than what you're going to learn here, obviously. So um, right here, I'm going to create a material. Here it is. And now I'm going to name it this one, let's say brown. With an N at the end, that'd be great. Now I'm going to the, um, the inspector and looking at the color, it's uh, white. So I'm going to click there and select a brownish color dark brown so this will do and um, you can choose the if you want it metallic or, or uh, albedo I'll go with metallic that's fine now the next thing I want to do is probably make it a bit smaller because we know uh, somehow that with magic leap we need smaller units so I'm gonna go with 0.4 everywhere so 0 0.4 0 0.4 0 0.4 for XYZ all right and let's change its position to zero one two all right so now um, let's save the scene press Control shift s or command shift s and let's call this one um, fireball rain okay save that so we have the scene now uh, you want to make sure that everything works so go to magic leap enable zero iteration it's gonna ask you to re-import sometimes even restart so go for it and uh, once you have that, make sure that in the build settings, you actually have selected the Lumin OS SDK. OK. I'm going to do it again just in case so that you guys um, know exactly what I'm talking about. All right. Unity. File build settings. And Lumin OS is selected. If not, click on switch platform right there. Make sure you have the SDK location already selected. Remember, all of this is done in previous lectures, so go ahead and go back to the previous lecture if need be. All right, so go ahead, press, press play. Um, as you can see right now, I only am showing the room, um, and the way I did that is just by clicking on, um, on this arrow on the other ones to get rid of it. So if you click on this arrow, you get rid of every single uh, viewport, or if you just uh, type, tap on the windows, they reappear, okay? But basically what I just did is get rid of these. All right, so click on the arrows to get rid of the ones you don't need. And uh, here is the scene. Now, uh, as you can see, this is not what we want. In the sense that uh, this is not the Magic Leap camera. So we got to get the Magic Leap camera. All right. So how do you do this? Well, go to presets and you see the camera right there. So drag and drop this here. All right. And you can remove the other camera right here. So press play again now. Let's see. All right, here we go. So as you can see, it's gone. And now we do see the ball right there. OK, cool. So that's the trick here. You got to get that specific camera. That's what you do, what happens when you create a new scene and you're not using a, a scene that was already created by Magic Leap. But you can always do it from scratch, not a problem. All right. So having done that now, the next step is to actually um, 
go to the sphere and assign the um, correct material. So we already created the brown material here. So I'm going to just drag and drop this onto the sphere. You can just drop it right there and boom, we see it here. Now it hasn't changed here because we're not in play mode, but if you look at the scene, it is brown, okay? All right, so let's make it rain. Um, no puns intended. So um, by the way, this game object, you can rename it to a camera. All right, and uh, let's add the script. I'm gonna add the script. Uh, I'm gonna create a, a new empty item, create empty, and I'm gonna call this one game manager. Why? Because that's the one that's going to manage what's happening in the uh, in, in the level here. All right, I'm gonna add a new script, so add component, and let's create the script. Um, just type new script, here we go, and let's name it, we're going to name it, so we're going to spawn object, so just name it spawn script. And C sharp, perfect, create and add. Right, so now we do have the script, we see it right there. I'm going to double click on the script to open it with Visual Studio, or mono develop depending on which version you have and here is the script now i'm going to create the logic to spawn um these uh, this ball i'm going to spawn a lot of these balls how do you do that well we're going to create a timer so i'm going to go all the way at the top and create that timer it's actually very simple um public float spawn time and that's the time it's going to take to spawn an object and i'm going to put 0.3 f so every third of a second okay so every 300 millisecond we're going to spawn one item it sounds fast but it's not because uh, there's a lot of room to cover now we gotta say what is the current time so that we will stop it so private float current time now you might be wondering why this one is private and this one is public well the reason why is that the spawn time you want to be able to change that from within unity and the current time is just uh, something that we use during the code um, and instantiate it to be zero at first, all right? And we wanna know what object we're gonna be uh, spawning. So let's create the game object, public game object. Let's call it ball again, like we did in previous examples. And we're calling it ball and uh, it's public so that we can change it from the Unity user interface, the editor, okay? Now let's create the logic, it's actually pretty simple. Um, current time is equal, plus equal, so we're increasing the current time with the delta time time dot delta time uh, why is that spawn time should be time so let's do it again time dot uh, somehow i'm having some issues with um uh how do you call that with the the autocomplete but it's definitely time dot delta time hopefully you don't have that issue but i know it by heart because i've been using it for a while this delta time is the, what's what's happening in the update every every time there's a new frame that's getting um rendered this is the delta time. So that's basically the, the time that was spent in between each frame. That's exactly what we want. And now let's say if the current time is greater than, guess what, than the spawn time. So basically we uh, will come to a point where it's time to spawn it. All right, so let's do it. Let's, uh, let's uh, do the current time is equal to zero so that it will keep on spawning new ones. And let's create a new um, a new method called spawn object. Why I'm making a new method? So that it's easier to deal with it. And I'm gonna create it right below, right below the update, right here. Let's go ahead and do this. So void spawn object. And what do we need to do here? Well, we need to spawn an object, but we need to figure out where we want to spawn this. Well, we're going to spawn this randomly uh, on the X and Y axis and on the Z axis, Basically, on uh, the height, uh, we will start with a height of, let's say, 2.5. Usually, that's pretty good for, uh, for a room. All right, so let's create the position. Ve that's a vector, vector3 position. Where we're going to spawn is equal to new vector3. And we need to create some random numbers here. So um, I need a random x and random y. So that would be random x and random y. Z actually, okay. But obviously, um, and 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 the, the the height will be two. But I don't have the randoms yet, so let's create them right above. So that would be a float random x is equal to Unity engine 
dot random. That's a, that's a function to create a random number dot range. And the range will be between um, the, between usually the size that you see in Unity for a room. The size um, it's usually between negative five and five. That's the, it's about ten meters long or ten units long. So minus five to five. They're floats obviously, but for five and five it's it's more than good enough. And let's do the same for the uh, Z. So I'm just going to copy and paste that right below and create this one random Z. All right, and that's pretty much uh, all there is to it. Now let's actually spawn the object at the position we have here. So, so that would be instantiate. And uh, we want to instantiate the ball. That would be the prefab ball at this position that we just created. And the uh, rotation would be quaternion dot identity. All right, and let's close that. Save this. Go back to Unity and make sure you don't have any errors, right? So go by, going back to Unity, it's um, right here. You see that it's compiling. And if you go to the console, uh, as you can see, I do have an issue. It's a quaternion. Obviously, they have a typo. It's quaternion, like quad, which is like uh, four, because it has four units, X, Y, Z, and uh, I believe it's W. All right, so let's see. It's still uh, compiling. Is it about to clear? All good, it's gone, perfect. All right, so now I'm going to press play and see what happens. All right, so let's press play. Let's bring the Magic Leap remote and let's see what we get. Oh, by the way, it's not gonna work, I know already. Why? Because we did not say what object needs to be instantiated. And I'm sure it's complaining, hey, he's like, hey, the, the variable is not assigned. Yep, that's right. So let's assign it. So let's go to the camera. Uh, I'm sure the, the game manager, we see the script, we see the ball and let's select the sphere we created here, that sphere, double click. And now we should be good to go. Press play and let's see it in action in the Magic Leap Simulator. Okay, so just uh, bear with me. Should happen any time now. There we go. You guys see all the balls? Cool. All right, but uh, as you can see, the balls are just hanging out there in the in the in the space. That's not what we want. We want them to start falling, right? So how do we do this? Well, we add gravity. But first of all, the ball is way too big, so let's make it smaller. I'm gonna do 0 0.1. Okay, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0 0.1. All right. Obviously, it's better to create um. Um, a prefab out of this, but I'm not doing that right now, but later I will for sure. Okay, so let's make it fall. How do you do this? Well, you add a component on that sphere and you add a rigid body. There we go. Just add a rigid body and it will automatically fall because it uses the gravity already. Now, if I press play, check this out. They definitely will fall in, this, in, the, um, in the simulator. Okay, it's loading. Check this out. Boom, they're falling. You guys see them? Now they're small and they're falling, but they, um, they, they're falling so fast that it's hard to see. But rest assured, if you want to slow this down, you can actually slow the whole gravity of the physics. Let me show that uh, to you how to do this. Click on, if I remember, it's Edit, Project Settings, and Physics. Perfect. And you see that the gravity is negative 9.81. So any one of you that's taken any physics class knows that this is the force of the gravity. Change this to negative one and press play. And now you'll see them falling slower, which is probably easier because if you want to try to um, have a, a game where people need to avoid the, uh, the fireballs, you definitely need to have um, them be slower. There you go. You can see there it's slower. It's still maybe a bit too fast. So maybe 0 0.5 would be better, but at least that gives us a good um, uh, a way to see what's happening. All right. Now the next step is actually to make them look nicer. And also um, we want to also stop them from touching the floor. I'm probably going to do that first. Whenever they touch the floor, they need to explode or disappear. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, but before I do that, I want to make it nicer. So how do I do this? Well, I'm going to uh, go in the asset store and get myself a nice 
uh, prefab. So I'm gonna do that right now. Go to the asset store. You guys should be logged in, so you should be able to um, to access the asset store. Ah, you see somehow the asset store is not loading. Sometimes it's a bug. You have to remove the window, like take it out and put it somewhere else. I know um, that's a bug in some Unity version, but right now it's good. It's working. All right. And here I'm just going to type. Uh, I know exactly what I want. I want the free Unity particle um, pack. So I'm just going to type Unity particle pack. And uh, it was made by the Unity team. It's an amazing pack. And here it is. And it's free. So go ahead, click on it and import it. All right, here it is. It's free. Click on import. So that might take a while. I'm just going to cut the video here because I don't want you to spend your time here. Oh, by the way, this might tell you, uh, um, are you sure you want to import? Uh, make sure you say yes, I made a backup import because um, some versions are in beta and uh, they might not have um, uh, updated the code yet. All right. Once you're done importing, you will see a new folder called effects examples. And inside of it, you will see the fire explosion effects folder. Click there and see the prefabs here. I want to use the torch effect. I'm going to drag and drop the torch. But before I do that, I'm going to duplicate it because I'm going to modify it. So you can press Ctrl D on PC and or Command D to duplicate on Mac. I'm, going to, I'm on the Mac, so I'll just do Command D. And here we go. We have this touch effect, torch effect. I'm going to rename it to custom torch effect. Custom because that's usually how I like to name them when I know I modified them myself. Here it is. And I'm going to drag and drop this here so that I can see it in the scene and modify it. Now, I want you to uh, go ahead and press play so that you can see the torch and how this works so that you know what we need to modify. Right. So don't worry uh, about um, about the simulator yet. Just look at it inside of the scene here. All right. So as you can see, we have a torch and we have the fire here. What I want to do right now is get rid of the, the torch here and replace that with the sphere that we created and still have the fire. All right. So I'm going to take the uh, fire here and put it inside of my sphere. I'm going to drag and drop the fire on the sphere that I created earlier. And see, so this is going to break the prefab. That's OK. Click Continue. Now, if you look at uh, this custom torch, I can just remove it or completely, um, completely destroy it. So Command Delete to delete. And now I do have the sphere. But what's happening is that the fire is not at the center of the sphere. So how do you do this? Well, click on the fire and put it at position 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, and 0. All right. Now, check this out. We do see the sphere and the fire on top of it. Now, the only problem is that the fire is way too big. Not a problem. Just click on it and change the scale to, let's say, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. So it'll be a lot smaller of a fire. And now let's see. And um, I still believe that it's not great, but um, maybe a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go with 0.3 so that we can see a, a better fire. Okay, you know, you can play with that yourself, obviously. All right. And um, now what I want to do is um, look at it in the simulator. So let's press play. And we should see now the ball fall with the fire effect. Let's see. Here we go. Perfect. So we do see the ball fall with the fire effect. Um, we can still work on the fire, but it's already a little bit better. Cool. Now, what's happening is that it's touching the floor, but it's not stopping. So we need to add a way for it to stop, obviously. So in the sphere, we already added the rigid body. That's great. Next thing we need to do is add the mapping of the room. And in order to do that, under Magic Pip, you have to add the ML spacer. So let's look at it. It should be in the prefabs. And here it is, the ML spatial mapper. Just drag and drop this in your scene. And that would handle that. Now press play and check this out. Now it's going to stop at the floor. Let's see. OK, you guys see that? Boom, it stops at the floor. That's good. But now we want it to explode, right? That'd be great, right? So let's do this. Oh, by the way, if you don't like to see the, um, you know, like all these wires, just click on the ML spatial mapper. And here under the mesh prefab, 
just select a different prefab. You, you know, you can actually create something that uh, that's using a different. Uh, so the original here is the prefab. You can literally change the um, the the colors here. Okay, the the wireframe here. Okay, that's what you'll have to do. Anyway, so now when, once it's touching the floor, I want it to start and create some kind of an explosion and stop right there. So let's create a collision script. Um, I'm gonna do it. Let's say on the sphere itself, add component, and I'm going to create a new script. And I'm going to call that script, let's call it collision script. Create and add. I'm going to double click on it to open it and start programming it. All right, so we need to add an object for the explosion. So public game object explosion. That would be the prefab that we're going to use for the explosion, obviously. And uh, we're going to say if it has been triggered or not. Bool, triggered, and triggered is equal to false. So at the beginning, it's not triggered. It's only when it touches the floor that we trigger, right? Or when it touches a, a wall as well. So let's go inside of, let's create the uh, trigger method. Now Unity comes with the on trigger enter, void, on trigger enter, and it uh, requires the other object, so the collider, other. And here we're going to say, if it has not been triggered yet, then we are going to trigger the code here. So let's say triggered is equal to true. And then we're going to instantiate the explosion object, right? So instantiate the explosion. And we're going to instantiate that at the position of this specific object or this ball. So that would be game object dot transform dot position. And then the rotation, let's just use the quaternion dot identity. All right, let's close this. And uh, once this is done, we want to destroy the uh, explosion object and this specific object. So let's create the destroy method void destroy object. And inside of this, we're going to destroy the explosion and we're going to destroy not destroy object just destroy all right and then destroy the this object so that would be this dot game object or just game object all right so we're destroying the explosion and the object itself which will be the ball and we need to call this method so let's go ahead and do this we can just do it right after that we are invoking the, this method with a, a delay that's why I, I call invoke because we are calling this method with a delay and that delay let's put 0 0.5 seconds so in a half a second the explosion would take half a second you can make it a bit longer if you like big explosions but uh, half a second would do all right so now we need to actually uh, save that and go back to unity and add the explosion game object so go back to unity make sure it's compiling um, if, if you have a problem, you would see it in the console. And let's select the object that we want to spawn. So click on the sphere, look at the collision script, and right under it, you will see um, a new object to spawn. Now I'm going to use um, uh, just some f the flame that comes in the, in the um, fire explosion effects. If you go under prefab, um, you will see the flame uh, explosion. There's, there's plenty of explosion. There's like a big explosion. There's a smoke effect explosion so i'm going to go with uh, the small explosion but feel free to change that and use any other ones so i'm going to take this one and i'm going to put it inside of uh, the sphere so right here sphere under this game object i'm going to drag and drop this here all right under explosion perfect now save this uh by the way the small explosion might be a bit too big because look at the scale it's two 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 gonna go with one 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 and I know that's still gonna be pretty big but at least we'll see it all right let's save this and let's press play and let's see if we see the explosion all right I'm going back to the unity simulator the magic leap simulator anytime now Right, so they're falling, and once they touch the floor, they should explode. Well, they are not exploding, and uh, I know why. 
and uh, I know some of you may have figured this out. I use the on trigger method, meaning that the rigid body needs to have the trigger, but I, I don't have any collision item here. So add a component and let's add the co collider. And we want a sphere collider. Why? Well, because it's, it's round, right? So let's use the sphere collider and let's work on its radius. So the radius is actually pretty good, I believe. Yet otherwise, you can play with the radius yourself. You guys see that radius? All right, this green radius. So I'm going to go with something that's about the size of the ball. Perfect. All right, make sure you click on is trigger. Very important. And let's press play. So let's see now. Crossing fingers. It's going to work, I know. But you know, that's, that's what programming is. You know, there's trials and errors. You know, some things don't just work right out of the box. Otherwise, I, I don't know any programmers that, oh, you guys see that? Yeah, the explosions are definitely way too big. But w at least we see them, right? Okay, and it's very laggy. We can't, we can't even, even see the object. So uh, as an exercise, what you should do is um, go ahead and make the explosion smaller, tweak this a little bit, and uh, have fun with that. All right, so, and then try to avoid uh, you know, going around and avoid the, um, the explosions. All right. By the way, if you like this video, you know what I'm going to say, right? Come on, just click on that like button. I know you can. I know, I know, you can do this. All right, also leave me a comment uh, if it's too slow or too fast for you. If, it's, um, if there's something you'd like to learn, something that you're not very sure about, then go for it. And if you really like this type of videos and you want more of them, tap that subscribe button. You won't regret it. Take care now.